Okay, thank you very much. This is indeed a lovely meeting. Thank you very much for the organizers. Uh, before starting it, I have two comments. So this will be the example of a deepening where temperature is not important because it's a capillarity phenomena. We believe temperature is not important. And let me just say a few words about my collaborators. So Botond is the same one as the one was in talk of Craig. But uh, uh, it's dispu disputable whose PhD student was. So let's not enter here in the <laughs> let's not enter here in this debate. And then uh, a colleague of mine from France, Yves Brechet, maybe you know him. So he was the one, in fact, together with him, we elaborated the idea. And Erzébet Boja, it's also originating from Transylvania. She was the one who made some nice experiments for us. And finally me. So I will speak about uh, deepening transition in the vetting. And uh, first of all, let me just quickly uh, remind you what the wetting is. It's the inverse phenomenon of wetting. So whenever you have a liquid layer, which you pose, you, you put on a surface, the liquid layer usually due to capillarity forces the wet. And uh, it's quite the opposite what it, it is happening in wetting. It leads to very nice patterns, mostly in the case when the surface on which the wetting is made is inhomogeneous. And it has a lot of practical applications. Just imagine the lubrifiants on solid surfaces, which is important for a lot of industrial applications. Okay, so I'll just show you some quick image, some quick videos about the phenomenon we are speaking about, the divetting phenomenon. This is a very simple divetting on a glass surface. This is divetting plus evaporation. This is under microscope we have here. This is divetting. On a pattern surface, in fact, it's a cell counter under the microscope, and due to evaporation, in fact, the liquid is going away. And this is a computer simulation, a molecular dynamic simulation of the wetting of uh, uh, gold atoms on the sapphire surfaces. This is not done by us. It's here is the reference for the talks. Okay, so what happens? So what I will speak about, so first of all, I will show you a nice kitchen experiment, a very simple experiment, the one that Erge Bad Bodil has done to illustrate how you can get a nice deepening transition in this phenomena. Then I will try to study this phenomena that we observe experimentally. So we will do a nice computational model, a very simple computational model, which is useful for studying this divetting phenomenon in homogeneous surfaces. Then we will see how we can handle point-like uh, point inhomogeneities, so pinning centers. Then we will study the motion of a deformable triple line. And then we will see if we can recover what we have seen in the experiments through this model. Okay, so let me just quickly remind you how the, uh, show you how the experiments were done. So we have a plate. On this plate, we put some pinning centers. In our case, we have an electronic copper, uh, copper plate on which we make holes. In the holes, we put, some, we put some paraffin, and we have a slightly warm water here, and we emerge this plate in the, in the water, and then we are pulling up with a smooth, constant velocity, and we are observing this triple line, which is uh, on the solid liquid surfaces. And what we can change in the experiment, we can change the density of the pinning centers, and we can change the pulling angle. So we pull out the plate, not vertically, but with an angle. So the theta is the angle that we, we are pulling out. So let me quickly show the experimental result. There are just some movies which are showing you first what is the influence of the distance between the pinning center, and then I will show you the influence of the theta angle. So the movies about the, this was the control surface. Then the case when there is five millimeter between the pinning center, three millimeters and two millimeters, the angle is the same. What we can see that at a given angle, at, at, at a given distance, at the two millimeters, the liquid does not flow anymore. So it is spin, the triple line is spin. So as a function of the average distance between the pinning centers, we have a depinning transition here. What happens as we change the angle, this is for small angle, this is large angle, and even larger angles, the last one. Uh, okay, why it's not working? It should, oh it is. You see that as we increase the angle, again we get this depending transition, so the triple line is pinned. Uh, it is somehow contraintuitive, isn't it? Because one would expect that as I'm increasing the angle, 
it will flow down much more, but it's quite inversely. As I'm increasing the angle, in fact, the pinned state is more favorable. So let's try to understand this in some simple models. So in fact, then we have a kind of phase transition in two directions we can get that, changing the tilting angle, this was one possibility, and the other one is changing the density, in fact, of the pinning angle. So the, uh, the, the my question is, can we really understand this using just a simple model? Okay, so how, how you approach theoretically the divetting phenomena, definitely, if the surface is homogeneous, it's not a big problem. You have a lot of possibilities. You can solve numerically the Navier-Stokes equations. This becomes problematic, however, if there is an inhomogeneous surfaces, and especially when you have pinning centers, which are in fact point line inhomogeneities. Then there are the classical depinning type models, which are in fact differential equations that you can solve, but this does not allow large deformations of the triple line. And you could show in my movie that they were really, really large deformations of the, of, of the triple line. They were sometimes steering of this, of, of this film and coagulation of some droplets. So the problem here, again, is if you want to allow large deformation, it is not working. The model which is really working in every situation is a microscopic molecular dynamic simulation, but that is problematic if you go to mesoscopic scale because you have to use a lot of atoms, in fact, and especially if you go to macroscopic scale. So what we observe is on macroscopic scale. So definitely a classical molecular dynamic simulation is also not working. Okay, so let me just quickly show our method, how we try to tackle our problem. We make an energetic ap approach and we transform the problem, the 3D problem, in fact, in a 2D problem, first of all. So as I tell you, told you, the approach is two-dimensional. Let's forget, for the beginning, the shape of the liquid. Okay, let's forget this shape and let's assume that we see the liquid droplet from the, the droplet which is diverting from above. Yes, and let's assume that there is a circular droplet from the top view, and let's imagine that this droplet is, a sphere, is, is like a cylinder, okay? And then let's try to compute the energy of, uh, com uh, of configuration like that. Let's neglect the gravitation again. So we say that at capillarity level, it could be important, definitely gravitation, but let's neglect it for the moment. So I just say that the total energy of the system is the sum of the surface energy, which is due to the surface tensions of the solid liquid, liquid gas, and solid gas interfaces. So you can use a kind of effective surface tension. And that's assumed that there the triple line carries also an energy. This is the energy of the triple line. This is the line energy, which is again an elastic energy. This is proportional with the, with the length of the line. So this is the line tension. And due to the line tension, I have an energy of the triple line and I have the energy of the surface. So I have a total energy, which is the surface energy plus the line energy. And in, let's say, very, very <laughs> intuitively, you can say that you can derive a force if you would know how the triple line looks. So let's assume that the shape of the triple line is given by this RU functional. And then you can de derive a from the gradient of the energy of force. And then you can say that the mobility of the triple line, in fact, it governs how, in fact, uh, the system evolves. So you can say that the velocity of the triple line is somehow the mobility of the triple line or the force. So you assume that is an overdamped motion that you have here. So the velocity is proportional with the force that you are doing. So how do you do this effectively in calculations? So the idea is that you discretize the triple line. So you put characteristic points on the triple line. And then this characteristic points, in fact, is giving you the shape of this triple line. The line tension can be computed from the coordinates of these characteristic points. Definitely the surface, the surface energy can be also computed if you know the coordinates of these characteristic points. And then you compute at each time moment the forces which are acting on your characteristic points. The way to do that is you compute the total energy and then the, uh, compute the force acting on the I and the, uh, on the I characteristic point in the X and Y direction, taking the gradient of the tension. So in fact, here it is uh, illustrated how it is. So here is the triple line, here are the characteristic points. You compute the forces which are acting on these characteristic points. And this is in fact how you follow the dynamics of the triple line. 
uh, in order to make the simulation going well, uh, due to the contraction of the liquid, or you can have that the triple line is changing the length, so you want to keep the density of the characteristic points constant. So from time to time, you can introduce new characteristic points if the distance between the characteristic points becomes too large, or you can get rid of the characteristic points if the distance between them gets smaller. So you have a cutoff at a maximal cutoff. If the distance will become bigger than this maximal cutoff, then you put a new point. If it is smaller than the minimal one, then, then, then you just take out one point from that. Okay, so in fact, the, the, the idea is very simple. Then you also say that the mobility, which carries, in fact, the mobility of a point, of a characteristic point, is depending on the segment that it is depending on. So as the segment, which, uh, which is uh, characteristic to this, char to this point, is bigger, then the mobility is smaller. So you have then the equation of motion. You just simulate how, in fact, the triple line is evolving. Let me show you just... Okay, there are a lot of, of, of problems uh, also, and all these problems were taken care by Boton, because first of all, if you just have the coordinates of the characteristic points, you always have to know where the liquid is, in which side of the triple line the liquid it is. You can get rid of this problem by taking, in fact, an order on the, on the triple line, so you can say that you are, don't have segments, but you have vectors, and you have an orientation, and you say that the liquid is always on the left side, of the triple line, then you can have problems when you have this coalescence and splitting. So you have to take care of this one in the simulation to allow two droplets to coalescence, and you have to allow if the neck is too big that you split, in fact, a droplet. If you do all this and you implement it in the code, you have a nice way to simulate, in fact, how the triple line is evolving on an un inhomogeneous surfaces. So let me show you some just some UV, a quick application of this method, you have here a liquid with two holes inside, and you see how the contraction of the liquid is going. Definitely the liquid is contracting infinitely here because you don't have gravitation. Yes, if I would introduce gravitation, due to the contraction, the liquid will rise, and it would stop this infinite contraction. So this is a kind of uh, de-wetting of, of the liquid shape, which has three holes initially, but there is no gravitation inside. If you put gravitation, you stop it, so it does not contract for infinity. Let me show you another simulation, which is already on inhomo inhomogeneous surfaces. So here you have the triple line, you can see it. Here are inhomogeneities, so there are points on the surface where the surface tension is different. You can see the roughening of the triple line. You can see, in fact, also how droplets are forming during this devetting phenomena. So the whole picture that you get it here, in fact, it looks pretty realistic. Okay, so now we want to, okay, I'll just recapitulate it here. Now, in our experiment, in fact, what we have are inhomogeneities where point line inhomogeneities, and now the question is how you can deal with the point line inhomogeneities. Of course, then you have pinning centers, and you distribute it, let's say, at the beginning, the pinning centers randomly in your surface, and you want to see, in fact, how your triple line is evolving if you have some pinning centers. So let's assume that there is uh, the pinning centers here are described first of all by their density. So you say that they are distributed with a given density on the surface. They have a given strength. We considered the simplest case when the strength is distributed uniformly between zero and the maximum value. And then the method that we used for simulating was the following. So the, the, the pinning forces were S Coulombian friction forces, so they could resist a given strength. This was the strength which was generated uniformly between zero and this at a zero maximum value. So the method was the following then. Let's assume that we know how the triple line uh, is it at, at, at a time t. And then we would calculate without the pinning centers how the triple line would look at uh, time t plus dt. And then each characteristic point, it spans a given surface around it, which is take the half of the distances to the neighboring point. This is the surface that the area, the triple line spans between two one. In this area, we count which are the pinning points. We are determining the maximum ones, and we say that the maximum one is in fact the force which will govern the dynamics from time t to time t plus dt. So this is the way, in fact, we handle this point line inhomogeneities in our model. Okay, and now we go to the geometry that we had in our experiment. So let's just imagine that we have a triple line. This is a straight line at the beginning. We have pinning centers which are distributed in my surfaces. 
And then there is a debating in these directions. So the fluid is going down vertically in these directions. We have a density, a uh, an average distance, if the L0 is an average distance between the pinning centers. Uh, the parameters of the model is the line tension, the alpha line tension, the effective surface tension that we had. Here, the line tension over the surface tension defines the characteristic length scale in the system. So this will be the length scale to which everything will be reported in our system. Then the strength of the pinning centers, it is the maximum value of the pinning centers that we, the maximum strength of the pinning centers we allowed, divided by this gamma surface tension, this exact, again, uh, dimension, a uh, uh, length unit parameter. And then we use uh, uh, adimensional lengths. All lengths are divided by this R0, which is the unit length in the system, and adimensional time to due to the mobility and the surface tension. And in fact, we end up that the model that we have with randomly distributed pinning centers has two main parameters. This is the L0 tilde and R1 tilde parameters, which are, in fact, the, the L0 tilde is related, the dimensionless parameter, which is related, is related to the average distance between the pinning center, and this is somehow <coughs> a dimensionless parameter, which is characterizing you, in fact, um, the strength of the pinning centers. And let's see, as a function of these two parameters, what the model will reproduce. Here is what you see. So you have here the evolution of the triple line as it is going down for different L0 values and different R1 values, so L0 tilde and R1 tilde. So again, this is the average distance between the pinning center. This is the uh, strength of the pinning centers. And we see that if the distance is big and if the strength of the pinning centers is low, in fact, you have just a roughening of the, of the triple line, which is going down, and it has a kind of equilibrium shape. You can increase then the strength of the pinning centers, and increasing it, you get a stronger and stronger roughening of the, of the triple line. You can do that also by increasing the density, and if you increase the density of the pinning centers, again, you get a roughening of the triple line. And finally, if you have big densities and strong pinning, the triple line stops. Yes, it doesn't evolve anymore. So this is, in fact, the transition that we are looking for, the, the pinning transition. Okay, as a function of these two parameters, you can now s make a state space of the model. This kind of plot is showing you where, in fact, is the pinning transition takes place. So the green, the green dots is the state where the pinning, the, where pinning, is the pinning is not. So the triple line is moving. This one where the triple line is pinned. So it is not moving, and you see that there is a phase boundary between these two, and you can study, in fact, the shape of this phase boundary. What you get, in fact, that this shape is well described by this equation, so there is a kind of scaling law also that you can see, and there is a very trivial exponent here, minus one, and as this R1 tilde parameter goes to infinity, this L0 critical, it goes to one half. Okay, so in fact, this model is able to reproduce what we see in experiments somehow, but we still don't understand why we have as a function of the angle, yes, because this is clear in this direction that I can have a phase transition if I'm increasing the distance, the average distance between the pinning centers. Now I have to understand why, in fact, this R1 tilde is related somehow with the angle, the tilting angle, how we take out, in fact, our plate from the, from the liquid. And before, in fact, answering that question, I just want to show you quickly that it's really a phase transition. You have a lot of critical phenomena that you can uh, see there. So you can see how the length of the triple line is changing as you are approaching, in fact, the transition point. So you can measure the length of the triple line by connecting not the neighboring points, but the second neighboring characteristic points and so on. So you can measure the length of the triple line by connecting each delta characteristic point in your system. This is in fact how the fractal structures are usually, or the fractal properties are usually derived. And then you see as you are approaching the critical point, this is as you are approaching, you see the one half for the given R1 
seeing in fact you have a nice scaling, so it means that really you have a critical roughening in your system there. You can also study the average velocity of the triple line, how it is going. So now I'm going to the critical point going up, so I'm fixing the R1 parameter and I'm going to it L0 in this direction up. If L0 is big, then you have a smooth motion of the average position of the triple line and as you are approaching, in fact, this um, L0 one half, you are getting, in fact, a lot of steps, a lot of stick slip motions, in fact, of this triple line, and you can study then, in fact, the size of the slip as a function, the probability distribution for the size of the slips, and you again get a nice critical phenomena because you have a power law dependence, and it's again a very, a very trivial exponent that you get there, a minus two exponent. Okay, so let me come back then quickly to the experiments. Why believe that? Why we believe that in fact this model in fact explains also what happens when we are changing the angle in which we are taking out the plate from the liquid. So we understand why we have a phase transition if we change the distance between the points as we increase the density of the pinning points. And then the answer so is just overview what happened here. You saw that I was on the control surface. It was a quite smooth triple line which was moving. When I was increasing the, the density of the pinning points, I got at one point where the triple line is blocked. So the system was not, the, the liquid was not moving again. And as a function of the angle, what we get, when the angle was small, in fact, the triple line moved. And as I increased the angle, we got a blocked triple line, and this is what I want to understand. In fact, why do I have this as a function of the angle? Because the other one seems already quite understandable. It was, in fact, understandable from the beginning. The explanation is very simple. So you can do the same simulation, in fact, uh, now varying, in fact, not the R1 parameter, but you can vary also the, uh, in the simulation, you can vary also the, um, uh, um, elastic energy of the triple line, so this alpha coefficient that we have, and we vary again the L0, so we can make the simulation now on a square lattice, so we just do it the same geometry that we had it here, and instead of R1 here, we just use this alpha, I'm, s I'm finishing immediately, uh, I'm using this alpha uh, line energy that I had it, and which is in fact, you can very easily see, is proportional with the inverse of this R1 tilde, and if you change the line energy, in fact, uh, the line tension, if you are changing, you see that again you have two phases. This is the phase which is the pinned phase, and this is the phase which is the depth dep dep in phase. So it looks quite inversely as it was as a function of R1. And our guess is that when you are changing, in fact, the angle, you are changing the, the thickness of the liquid. Yes. So as you have bigger and bigger angle, you have liquids which are less and less thick. And due to changing the liquid, you are in fact, the, 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 the thickness of the liquid, you are changing in fact the line tension. And this is in fact what we are seeing here. We are changing the line tension in the experiments and we are changing the density of the pinning center. And this is why we have these two phases. And you can cross this the pinning phase transition. If you, can, you can go over this depending transition in two directions. You can either change this alpha, so changing in fact the the tilting angle, how you take out the, the your sample from the liquid, or you change this distance between the pinning centers if you go in this direction. Okay, let's uh, uh, quickly just to the conclusion. So our main conclusion is that this divetting phenomena can be very elegantly and simply modeled if you use a combination of a kind of depinning model with the molecular dynamic simulations by using these characteristic points. You can reproduce quite uh, realistically the shape of the triple line that you observe in the depinning, the divetting phenomena on inhomogeneous surfaces. We showed an interesting depinning light transition and we studied it experimentally and our method, our simple model was able to reproduce what we saw it in experiments. Thank you very much. I don't think it matters. No, no, no. I, I, I am sh pretty sure about that, not. The density, this is what it's important, and the strength of the pinning centers. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, 
we, we, we are working now on experiments where it is not a regular lattice, and I can assure you that you get the same. So it's not really depending on, the, on, the, on, on what kind of lattice you have there. We, we already do it. We have 3D printing surfaces and we are trying the experiments with these 3D printed surfaces and we have somehow the same phenomenon. Okay. Okay, so you fix the arc lines and not the distance. So we, we somehow fix the interval of the distance that it was. I have to look to it. I don't know about that, but. Okay, thank you. Thank you.